When I reviewed the MIG-6 CP503 current probe last time, I demonstrated the input current waveforms of a non-power factor corrected and a power factor corrected switching power supply. And the gist of it is that in order to improve the power factor, you need to smooth out the current waveform so it spans the entire cycle of the AC input and approximates a sinusoid. I feel like I need to make this dedicated video as there are some misconceptions out there that the non-ideal power factor situation is only an issue for switching power supplies. In fact, this is not the case. Poor power factor is actually a problem for most of the linear power supplies as well. As the reason behind is almost exactly the same for these linear power supplies as for the switching power supplies. Fundamentally, the poor power factor is due to the large capacitor connected right after the bridge rectifier. Since the capacitor serves as a reservoir, it is only topped off during a relatively narrow window of the AC cycle at right around the peak of the voltage waveform. So let me demonstrate this with an unregulated power supply with a bridge rectifier and a large capacitor bank at a transformer secondary. For linear power supplies, this section of the circuitry is essentially the same, and this setup without the voltage regulation portion of the circuit is just to simplify things a little bit. In this setup, the CP503 current probe is used to measure mains input current, and the DP750 differential voltage probe is used to measure the mains input voltage for reference. The kilowatt here shows the measured power factor, and an electronic load is connected to the output from the power supply, which essentially is connected to the terminals of the capacitor bank. So now let me turn on the load, and let's observe the waveforms. As you can see on the oscilloscope, the waveforms are very similar to what we saw when we did the measurement with a non-PFC switching power supply. Here we see the current waveform is centered around the peak of the voltage waveform. And right now the power factor is at 0.74, if you can read here. By the way, I'm trying to make sure that everything appears in the same shot, so the oscilloscope does look a little bit small. Hopefully you can still see the picture back there. And uh, let me increase the load current a little bit. So right now it's at 1 amp. Let me increase 2 amp, 3 amps. You can see that. So the power factor actually is improving right now at 3 amps. We're measuring at 0 0.8. And that's to be expected. As the load draws more current, the voltage drops more across the capacitors. And therefore, the bridge rectifier diodes turn on earlier to top off the capacitors. This resulted in a slightly broadened current waveform, hence the improved power factor. Of course, by reducing the filter capacitor, we can improve the overall power factor, as for a given load current, the smaller the output capacitor, the sooner the stored charge is depleted, and the lower the charging threshold voltage, and therefore the wider the current waveform within the voltage cycle. As an extreme, if I remove the output capacitor altogether, the power factor should be a perfect one, given the resistive load. And let me demonstrate here. So let me turn the load off, unplug the power supply, and let me just uh, remove the load, put the load right onto the secondary of the transformer. Plug back in the power supply here. Let me turn on the load. Now you can see that with the filter capacitor removed, we actually achieve much better power factor here at 0.91. Of course, it's not one because we have uh, multiple factors here. Number one is the bridge rectifier it essentially distorted the output waveform. Number two is that we also have this uh, electronic load. For whatever reason, I don't think it likes the non-filtered output DC voltage. And you can see that the voltage is uh, changing all over the place. So I suspect there is a little bit of oscillation going on, and that's affecting the output waveform as well. And by the way, yeah, the spike definitely shouldn't be there, and that's definitely an artifact from the electronic load. So let me uh, adjust the current a little bit to see if we drop it a little more. And well, yep, at the 2 amps, it looks like it is uh, better. But still, it is not ideal waveform. But nevertheless, we do get a pretty high power factor. And that's just to demonstrate that without that capacitor bank, you will get a much higher power factor.
Of course, now the output ripple noise is going to be horrible as the output from the bridge rectifier is no longer filtered. So you can see that from a power factor perspective, we want to have the capacitor at the bridge rectifier output as small as possible. And from a linear power supply ripple perspective, we want the capacitor to be as large as possible. Now, these are obviously conflicting requirements, and the only way to address this problem is to insert a power factor correction circuit stage in between. So from the bridge rectifier's perspective, there is very low capacitance, and from the load perspective, there is a sufficient capacitance to produce a smooth DC with low ripple noise. And this brings us to one of the simplest ways to at least partially address the power factor issue. If we insert a large inductor between the bridge rectifier and the capacitor, we essentially form an LC low-pass filter, and the inductor limits the rate at which the current can change. And this in turn expands the current waveform and makes it more in phase with the voltage waveform and therefore improves the power factor. So now let me connect an inductor before the capacitor and right after the bridge rectifier, and let's take a look at the current waveform again. By the way, the inductor I'm using here is roughly one Henry. So let me hook everything up and we'll take a look. With the addition of this inductor, you can see we get a very good power factor. Currently it is at 0.91. And right now we're joined about three amps. The, of course, the voltage drops to about three volts across the terminal. That's because we have a very large inductor and this inductor has fairly high resistance. So I won't be able to increase the current much higher than that without it drops below the minimum voltage of this array electronic load, which is right around 1.7 volts. Now what I can do is to reduce the current to see what impact it has on the power factor. So let me reduce it to 2 amps. And at 2 amps we're still getting a 0.91 power factor, so let me reduce to 1. Now at 1 amp. You can see now the power factor dropped to about 0.85. Even at a power factor of 0.85, that is still very good for a linear power supply. There are a few reasons why linear power supplies typically do not come with power factor correction circuitry. The first reason is that most linear power supplies are considered low power devices, which rarely exceed a couple of hundred watts. So PFC is less critical. Whereas switching power supplies typically offer much higher output wattage, and therefore the inclusion of PFC makes a lot of sense, so that the total apparent power can be reduced. The second reason is that if you were to add an active PFC to a linear power supply, you would have introduced switching noise, which unfortunately compromises one of the key benefits of a linear power supply, which is low noise. You could use a passive PFC like the ones I demonstrated here, but the inductor for mains frequency is just too bulky and significantly increases the build of material of a linear power supply. Another reason is that the switching power supplies operate at a much higher switching frequency and typically produces a lot of uh, harmonic noise. An active PFC can not only improve the power factor, but also can reduce the THD or total harmonic distortion of the current waveform. Whereas for linear power supplies, the THD is much lower because the charging and discharging cycle is essentially the same as mains frequency. Of course, there is a little bit of harmonic distortion due to the bridge rectifier. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel. I will catch up with you next time.